Hello and welcome to this mini gem brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is James Fisher and in this mini gem I'm going to tell you about dizziness and how to get your head around it. In this mini gem I hope that by the end of it you'll approach the dizzy patient with a bit more confidence and I hope that you'll be able to spot a possible diagnosis of BPPV. I'm also going to show you how to perform a simple bedside test to diagnose this condition. So why am I going to do dizzy? Why am I doing dizziness today? Well, I'll be honest, dizziness was always my heart sink presenting complaint when I was a foundation doctor. I find it, I found it and still do really hard. But the good thing about dizziness is it's one of the few things in medicine where there's a condition that you can cure simply by laying your hands on a patient. That condition is BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Let's break that down, go through the, the letters. First of all, the B is for benign, and to be honest, I think this is a bit of a misnomer. This is anything but. This condition makes people fall over, it makes people sustain fractures, and I've seen a number of people who haven't been diagnosed with it, who've ended up on long-term vestibular sedatives, beta histine, etc. They end up with balance problems as a result, and even in some cases with drug-induced Parkinsonism. The vertigo, well that, that bit's easy, right? Dizziness. Unfortunately not. Dizziness can be really tricky to pin down exactly what someone means, and I think if someone says they're dizzy, you should reflect the question back to them and say, what do you mean by dizziness? If you want to try and pin it down to true vertigo, so that's rotatory movement, I quite like the question, is it like being on the waters of the fairground? Sometimes it's really difficult to pin people down, and in, in those situations I'd urge you to still keep this condition in your mind because it's eminently curable. First piece of positional. And as you see from the picture here, rolling over in bed is a common precipitant for the symptoms. It's a positional change that brings this on. I've also seen patients who've had it when they've been looking up in cupboards in the kitchen or looking up at the washing line where they've been hanging their washing out. The last P is for paroxysmal. And to understand why this condition causes brief paroxysms or brief spells of dizziness, you have to go back to the vestibular cochlear system. On the left you see the vestibular apparatus which consists of three semicircular canals. Within those you have fluid and movement of the fluid causes displacement of this gel gelatinous blob called a cupola. When that's displaced the hair cells are moved and as a result of that action potentials are induced and your vestibular apparatus is stimulated. If we take a cross section through the semicircular canals imagine that I'm turning my head to the right it's fluid shifter in your, in, within your ear that moves these cells, the hair cells, and produces the, the perception that your head is moving. In BPPV, it goes wrong, and that's because there's debris in the inner ear, what we call an otolith, which is represented by this little yellow blob. When you sat there quietly, it, it minds its own business, it doesn't cause any problems, but when you move your head, when you roll over in bed, it goes on the move, and in doing so it causes problems and induces dizziness. So let's go back to our cross section again and see what's happening and work out why it causes dizziness. When, when, you, when you rotate your head the otolith moves and it stimulates the apparatus of one side. This is very confusing for your brain. One is saying you're spinning, the other's not. The result of this is the illusion of movement. So you've taken your history from your patient and you'll be in one of two positions. Either you've got the dream history of classic paroxysms of true vertigo when people change position or you'll still be struggling to pin down what they mean by dizzy and you've got someone who may be just be falling over and you're not sure why again I'd, I'd urge you to keep in mind that this is a possible diagnosis and the next stop is to go on to do a Hallpike test this is the diagnostic test for BPPV so what do you tell the patient well I like to say hey this is really good news if this is this condition we might be able to fix it here and now what you're then going to say is what we're going to try and do is replicate the movements that bring on your symptoms and you may not thank me for this because it will bring on your symptoms but again it'll be short-lived and it's good news because it means it's potentially treatable. So how do we do it? Well first of all you need a couch. Get the patient up on the couch and ask them to sit with their, with their bottom such that if they were to lie flat their head would be dangling just over the edge of the couch. The next step is then to ask the patient to turn their head to one side, about 30 degrees. 
and you pick the side that they would, the, to which they rolled over in bed that would cause the symptoms, i.e. I'm dizzy when I roll to the right, you get them to look to the right. What you're then going to do is on the count of three, gently lower them back such that they're lying flat. You'll notice from this video that the head is just below the level of the, uh, the, level of the horizontal. You'll also notice that the doctor here is looking very, very carefully in the eyes, and that's because the eyes have it when it comes to BPV and a whole pike test. It's the eyes that tell you whether or not it's BPV. Watch here as the patient's lowered back into the, into the horizontal position. What you see is rotatory nystagmus, which is your brain's confused attempts to maintain conjugate gaze, and this is precipitated by confusion between the two sides of your vestibular system. At this point, your patient will be probably saying, I feel dizzy and horrible, please stop it, doctor. But this will pass and fade. So two key things to note there. Firstly, as we lie the patient flat, notice that the symptoms and their, and their nystagmus don't come on immediately. That's because there's a latent period of BPPV. It takes a little while for the otter lift to work its way around the canals and start causing problems. If you have a patient in whom symptoms and nystagmus occur immediately on lying flat, that should be alarming and it should alert you to the possibility that it might not be a peripheral or vestibular cause, but it might in fact be a central or brainstem cause. Similarly, you'll notice that the symptoms pass off with time, and this is basically because the otter lift settling down was stopping causing problems. If you've got a patient in whom the symptoms of the nystagmus are persisting, again, you should be alerted to the possibility of a central cause. A few words of caution. Often you need an assistant to lower a patient back, and I'll be honest, sometimes more frail patients can find this a touch daunting. I think careful explanation of what, what you're doing and why is critical. Also, be careful with patients who have neck problems, and often the degree of extension that you want is simply not possible, and you have to be pragmatic. So what next? Well, if you've got a pos po positive whole bike test, great, you've diagnosed BPPV. The next step is curing them. And to do that, you need to do an please maneuver, a series of maneuvers that will be covered in an upcoming mini gem. What happens if it's negative? Well, it's probably worth doing a repeat on the other side, i.e. sit the patient back up, turn their head to the opposite direction and repeat. So in summary, hopefully, you will be a wee bit more confident when you're approaching dizziness because you'll be on the lookout for the classical history of BPPV. Now you'll also have a feel for how to do the bedside test for this, a whole pikes test. In terms of further reading, I'd like to orientate you to the Imperial College website that looks at d dizziness and vertigo, and, and it's their videos that I'm very grateful for them allowing us, us to use. Lastly, there's a paper from the BMJ that's a, that's a few years old now, but it's a nice summary of the condition. Thanks for listening, and we hope to see you again.